Well, I'd like you to turn your Bibles again to 2 Corinthians, the Hallelujah, fifth chapter. And we've been in a series on talking about overcoming emotional issues. <laughs> a lot of times, what happens is that with the fact that we think that emotions is God, that's a trick of the enemy. And I know sometimes, even you got to be careful, one of your loved ones go to be with the Lord, and you don't let your emotions take over. And a lot of times what happens is that, and I've heard people say this, and I've heard my own relatives say this, um, that they see their loved one. Well, let me say something about that. They don't really see them. What they're doing is seeing demons that are working on with their emotions. See, because other thing, everybody that, that, that was raised from the dead did not appear. Years ago, my um, aunt, she used to say she always see her grandmother. That was my great-grandmother. And she would come sit side the bed. Yeah. And she said, after a while, it became very annoying. And one day she said, Jesus, gone. See, so that's not a God. That's the enemy playing on the people's emotions. They're in heaven. They're not, they're, 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 they're not down here doing visitations. <laughs> Amen? I mean, there's a, there's a time, but not... <laughs> Not that time. So the emotions can take people where they don't want to go. Amen. As a matter of fact, some people have wound up going crazy in situations like that. It's not good. Amen. So if you ever see that happen in your life, just take a thought and say, in the name of Jesus, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Amen. Now, we said we're going to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Why did it get there? You must know God loves you. That's one of the primary things. You must know God loves you. You can't base your feelings on whether God loves you or don't love you. One day you might feel he loves you. Another day you might not feel he don't love you. Amen. Satan and his demons will attack the emotions. Emotions are feelings on the inside that caused by pain or hurt or pleasure. Negative emotions move you away from the will of God. Negative emotions will move you away from the word of God if you let it. Amen. Which wind up could be resulted in sin and wind up resulted in death. Emotions will talk to you. Amen. You can't depend on your feelings at all because they change. God gave us emotions. But they are not to govern our life. Amen. Now look at that uh, one other thing. Emotions flare up sometimes when people get hurt. Hurt happens in families with friends. And Satan is trying to use that to rob you of what God has for you. Always remember this. Anytime you are attacked, okay, you got to understand, that's an opportunity for you to use the word. The Bible says you're persecuted for the word's sake. Everybody's persecuted for the word. It's an opportunity for you to use the word. See, think about Jesus. I heard this last. Think about Jesus, okay? Everything they tried to do to him, he rose above it. Tried to throw him over a cliff. He, everything, he rose above. Even when they put him to death, guess what happened? He resurrected and put more little Jesus all over the world. <laughs> Amen? So in other words, this, realize when persecution, all these things happen, there's a reason it's happening. Don't think, did I get in that scripture of all these fires, trials come your way? Don't think it's strange that these things come your way. But you, you, you become victorious. You don't have to, last week we learned, you know, even though we, we're troubled on every side, but we don't, we're not cast down, not destroyed. We don't have to be. But the, the persecutions are real. Amen, Second Corinthians, I want to read this now. But we walk by faith, not by sight. And I simply said, we walk by Faith, not based on our physical senses, not based on our emotions or what our emotions are telling us. Amen? So we can't do that. Now, I want to get into something I want to get into today because I'm going to jump right into it. Go to... Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Did I do Second Corinthians four? I did. Go to Habakkuk chapter three. Habakkuk chapter three, verse fourteen. Habakkuk, not tobacco. Amen. Chapter three. Now I'm going to talk to you about a man that really had trouble. Habakkuk three, verse fourteen. He said, thou did strike through with his staffs the head of his village, and they came as a whirlwind to scatter me, and their rejoice was as to devoured the poor secret. Now notice here, this guy is getting attacked. Amen? He's really getting attacked. Watch verse 15. Thou did walk through the sea with thy horses, through the heaps of great waters. Verse 16. When I heard, he said, my belly trembled. Would you agree? That's an emotion. <laughs> he said, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice of rottenness entered in my bones. Ooh, ooh. You know, emotions can start you to hurt. Am I, am I for real? <laughs> he said, rottenness entered in my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us, let us labor to enter into God's rest. There's a resting place in every situation. I'll say it again. There's a resting place. If I'm not laboring in the word, how will I be able to find the rest because I'm not laboring in the word? That's the only labor God requires us to do. Everything else has already been provided. He requires us to labor in the word. That's all he said, do labor in the word. He said, that I might rest in the day of trouble when it come up unto, unto the people and he will invade them with his troops. Now watch this. Next verse. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Now, the man got a problem even with his crops going on. His living. <laughs> okay, he got a big problem there. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. Oh, his fruit's messed. Everything's going wrong here. I'd say that's a big attack. Amen. The labor of olive trees shall fail. Oh, the olive trees failing. And the field shall yield no meat. Mm -hmm. mm. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herds in the stalls. Wow. Verse 18. <laughs> Yet, you know what I'm going to do? I will rejoice. I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of Mount Salvation. I will joy in deliverance. I will joy in God's grace for what he's already provided. I'm going to spend my time talking about what God has provided, not what based on what I see. See, because if I start rejoicing what he provided, I'm corresponding to what he's already done. That's going to change what I'm seeing now. That's how it works. See, faith, when you use your faith, you're not trying to get God to do something. What you're doing is you're corresponding to what he's already done. Now, years ago, when we got a hold of faith, we thought we was using our faith to get God to do some praise God for his mercy and things like that. But realize everything is really already done. And sometimes we were doing things. We were acting like it was already done. We didn't, we didn't have great revelation on that, but certain things were working. Then we found out somebody came along and gave us this great message about all the things that you can do wrong to stop God from blessing you. But God, the Bible said God is already blessed up with all spiritual blessings in heaven. We're all ready to bless. So now what happens is that hearing a message like that, now you're saying, this is not working because I'm doing this wrong. This not, okay, or maybe, oh, I cussed today. So now nothing's going to happen because I cussed. Has nothing to do with your behavior. Everything has to do with you corresponding to God. Excuse me. <coughs> because if it has something to do with your behavior, look at David. <coughs> My goodness. <coughs> Amen. Look at the stuff he was doing. And God still, the manifestation of the best is still come to him. Now, I'm going to share something about my own story. Our own story. When we got a hold of the word, I wasn't, should I say, living the kind of life I was living now. I still had stuff had to be worked on. 
But, you know, we were corresponding to God, to God and didn't even know it. And we weren't, th- we weren't thinking about what we was doing wrong. We were just walking by faith. We did something wrong. We kept on going. Then somebody got to give this condemnation message about guilt, what you're doing wrong, this why it's not working. Well, it wasn't working because of that condemnation and guilt. See, understand this. If you allow guilt and condemnation, then you'll start to believe it's not working for that reason. Then you'll stop corresponding to God because you think God ain't done nothing when God has already done it, already provided. So now Satan is using the guilt. The Bible says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no guilt to us. We're in Jesus. If the Bible says, um, let me turn there, turn to 1 John chapter 4. I think it's verse 18. I'll tell you in a minute. 1 John 4, 18, I think. Paul asked me in the back, he says, uh, he said, that's the outfit you had on when you was in the army? I said, no, I did not this. I don't know where that is. Because <laughs> he said, boy, you really preserved it. No. <laughs> that, that, that did happen. Amen. Yeah, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, we're going to look at. Matter of fact, go to verse 17 so you can get a more clear meaning of what he's saying. There's no fear in love. Fear is perverted faith. Fear is contrary to God's word. It still works the same way faith, but it works in the negative. It works contrary to the word. Amen. He said, here in our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now watch this. Because as he is, what? So are we in this world. Now, how is Jesus? Jesus is doing well. As he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is, so are we. See, I say this all the time. Only only Jesus that people are going to see is us. And you know, some people will get indignant. You turn around, I'm just like Jesus. I had a guy left the ministry because I made a statement that we're just like God. Well, who are we supposed to be like, Donald Duck? You know, my kids are corporals. They're supposed to be like me. The Bible said we're made in his image. But see, they have this thing. Here here it is. Here's that religious thing. I'm just so unworthy. I'm just so dirty. How could I possibly be like God? Has nothing to do with you. It has to be with you and Jesus. God ain't looking at you at at your flesh. Father as God is concerned, your flesh is dealt. It's all, everything has already been dealt with already. Father as God is dead. God not sitting up there with a book, writing everything down you do wrong. Well, the Bible say, Pastor, that all of us go sit at the judgment seat of Christ. No, we're going to sit at the judgment seat of Christ Christ because we're judging sinners. <laughs> We're not going to, because the Bible says, that by your words you shall be justified, by your words you shall be condemned. Now understand, if, already, if everything, Jesus paid the price for everything, and judgment has already been done, that would be double jeopardy. He would be judging us again. And if we're going to be judged, that means Jesus has got to be judged again, because we're in Jesus. How many of you ever heard the scripture? I'm, I'm going to throw you a little, give you a little extra benefit today. The dead in Christ shall ride, and we all shall be caught up and meet him in the air. How many people think that the dead that's in the grave are going to get out of the grave and go up and meet Christ in the air? That's what religion teaches you. But that's not what he's really saying. He said the dead in Christ shall rise. Think about this. They're in heaven. They're just going to rise in heaven. And then we're going to meet them all in the air, those that are alive. He's not, God's not going to take that body and use that body there. We're going to get a new glorified body when we come back to earth. But see, people think that body he's going to use. He's not going to use. Matter of fact, I go a little bit further. 
when Jesus rose from the dead, the people rose from the dead, those people w- went on up to heaven. I can guarantee you the body that Jesus had, he had a glorified body, even though it kept the marks of his womb, but that body was glorified. That was not the same body he walked on the earth with. <laughs> he had, that's when he was able to walk through walls. He had a glorified body. Amen? Now, let's read this verse 17. Here's our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment at, because as he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is, so are we. I got to see myself just like Jesus. I, just like him. That's who I am. See, and it, the whole body of Christ, they don't know who they are. If you don't know who you are, how are you going to know where you're going? And I appreciate, I've learned things about black heritage, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, before that, you need to know who you are in Christ. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to belittle that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, but we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. That's the problem. And Satan, I tell you, religion kills it kills the word. That's what it is. That's it. Religion is what killed Jesus. Pilate didn't want to put him on the cross. The religious folks voted to put him on the cross. And that same Pharisee spirit is in the church today. I never forget when I first went out of ministry, I went to this church, and this guy, he had messed up his sin. And they were all pointing fingers, the mothers of the church. Oh, you've been a bad boy. You've been bad. You know, I mean, they would just point out. I mean, they were just beating them up like mad. And he was crying. And the Lord said to me, you go up and tell him to rise up now in the name of Jesus. I said, Lord, somebody else's church. He said, go ahead and do it. He, he gave me permission. I said, rise up now in the name of Jesus. He got up. Oh, <laughs> stopped all that. Boy, did they look at me. <laughs> it wasn't a nice look either. But see, sometimes you got to do what God tells you to do. It was just, and the pastor was even, it was just a whole ceremony. See, people like that stuff, you know, because it makes them feel more spiritual because they're not doing what you're doing, but they're still doing something else. <laughs> Amen. Now, go to uh, Look at Romans 8. Actually, I want you to go to Romans 7. I want, I want to deal with the whole thing. I want to deal with something in Romans 7. Go to Romans 7, verse, I think it's 18. <coughs> I'm going to sum up the story. Paul... Um, you got to go back further. The Lord wants me to go back further, so I got to go back further. Let me find out where I want to go. See, the Lord just changed this dramatically. I thank you for change, Lord. I'm willing to do what you want me to do, not what. Go to, yeah, we're going to look at Romans 7. Go down from verse. Fourteen, start at fourteen. We're gonna start at. Then we're gonna go into chapter eight. Watch this. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. But he said, "I am carnal." He says he's talking about his flesh. My flesh is carnal. Soul under sin. Your flesh is soul under sin. Whether you know it or not, when you when you came in this world, you trained your flesh to sin. You were a sinner. That's what you were trained to do. Now when you got saved, okay, what happened now? You got to renew your mind so you can train your flesh. See, understand this. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. And you live inside of a physical body. That's what Paul prayed. I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be, be preserved blameless through the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now why? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, soul under sin. The next verse. Now watch what Paul says. For that which I do, I allow not. But what I would, that do I not. What I hate, that do I. Paul got a problem. He's doing something he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> Amen. 
Now why? He was saying he did it right, then he turned around, he said, I did it wrong. Watch the next verse. If then I do that which I would not, I could sit unto the law that is good. What he's saying, this law is what's causing me to sin. This law, the Bible says, the Bible said the law strengthens sin. It makes you sin more. You know, you know you're, when, don't be afraid to be criticized. Criticism produces promotion. You ever why? <laughs> Even today. <laughs> Criticism, you keep criticizing, you always got their name out there. You tell people don't do something, just like this movie they had, they put out that Jesus was a homosexual. They put a movie out like that. Now, and the sad part about it, instead of Christians not going seeing the movie, they want to go see what the movie is about so they can go back and talk about it. Leave it alone. It'll die. But no, they went to the movie to support paid money to go see it. That's like people. People love dirt. That's what news is, dirt. Now watch. If then I do that which I would not, I consider to the, the Lord that is good. Now watch what he says. Now there is no more I that do. Well, hold on a minute. He said, Paul said, it's no more that I that do that. What are you talking about I? I who? I, my spirit man, can't sin. My flesh can, but not my spirit. The Bible says he that's born of God cannot sin. You're born. So guess what? If you cannot sin, that means, as far as God is concerned, you're not sinning. Now, he gave us the authority in the earth for us to deal with the issues in this earth, Father said, yes. But Father God's spiritual sin don't exist. See, Israel, they were sinners. He had a covenant with them, but understand, they were spiritually sinning. We're not. <laughs> now then, there's no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. What sin are you talking about dwelling? In his flesh. In his flesh. In his flesh. Now watch what he says, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is my what? Flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. My flesh don't want to do what's good. It's been trained. He's saying my flesh has been trained to do the wrong. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good? He said, I find not, Father, my flesh. My flesh, hey. Yeah. You get saved, and, and you watch it by internet, you get saved, and all of a sudden, all these fields are coming, you still want to go jump in the bed with another woman? Let me say something to you. That's your flesh. You got to renew your mind. People tell you, oh, my, when I got saved, my, my hands look new, my feet look new. No, you, there ain't nothing changed about your feet. For I know that is in me, that flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good? He said, I find not. But he's going to discover something through all this. Watch this. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. He said, I'm doing the evil. And understand, Pastor Paul knew the law. He understood about the law. But see, the law was trying to work his way into, into, what, into the revelation of what Christ was giving him. Watch this now. Verse 20. He's going to discover something. Now, if I do that which I would not, it's no more I that do it. Now, he said, if I do it, he said, I ain't doing it. <laughs> he said, I'm not doing it. But the sin that dwelleth where? In me. In me where? In my flesh. My flesh been trained to sin. Next verse, 21. I find in the law that when I would do good, Evil's present with me. Verse 22. And then he discovers something. Watch this. For I delight in the law of God after what? The inward man is the spirit man. I'm going to focus on delighting what the spirit man needs. John, um, pause your place there. Go to John 6, 63. 
St. John 6.63. Hallelujah. We're going to come back to there in a minute. John 6.63. It is a spirit that's quick and alive in you. Everybody says it's a spirit that's alive in me. The flesh profited nothing. For the spiritual things, the flesh doesn't profit nothing at all. Watch her. Understand that. The spirit profit nothing. He said, Why? The words I speak unto you, they are what? The spirit. And they are life. God's word is spirit. God's word is coded to your spirit man. Your spirit man get nourished by the spiritual word. That's when when people get the truth of the word, they start getting things for their life. That's when they start to feel they're getting, they getting filled now. Because they're getting, they're getting the word spiritually. Like... A lot of times what happens, and I think people are sincere, but they, they're trying to use the Bible the same way the Jewish people use the Bible, trying to understand it from a, just a mental capacity, not spiritual. Amen? Now go back to John, Romans 7, verse, what was verse, what was that, 17, 18, what was it, 19? you tell me. Romans, what was that, Romans 7? We were at Romans 7, verse um, 22. Romans 7, verse 22. For I delight in the Lord God after what? The inward man. I'm going to delight what the inward man. What do the inward man need? The inward man need the word. Spiritual word. That's what the inward man needs. If you're going to overcome the emotions, you need the word. Now watch this, verse 23. Verse 23. But I see another law. Oh, here's this law. See this law? See how this law does? Another law, another law in my member. One against the law of my mind. Wow. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members, in my flesh. So the Lord is trying to bring you into more sin. See, put it like this. If I woke up in the morning, I looked in the mirror, and I saw a booger in my nose, okay, just because I saw that booger, that's not going to get rid of it. Amen. I know it's a little gross, but think of, that's not going to get rid of the booger. I have to correspond and remove it. You got me saying to you. So guess what? Sin just make, make you aware of what's wrong. It doesn't solve the sin problem. You all heard what I said to you. It just makes you aware of what's wrong. Verse 24. Oh, right man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Watch this, verse 25. He, and he's going to discover what to do. Twenty-five. Is there twenty-five? No, there's not a twenty-five. Go to the next chapter, eight. I apologize. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, a twenty-five. Yeah, twenty-five. He's going to discover something. I thank God through Jesus Christ. Christ Christo, the anointed one, his anointing. Our law, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but the flesh, the law of sin. Now, what does he mean? He, what he's saying there, I'm going to renew my mind. That's what he's really saying. We have a new law, and the new law that we have is the law of faith. Is the law of faith and of love. That's the new law. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Now watch this, verse 26. I'm sorry, Romans 1. Now watch this. Sometimes they have the chapter, they're there for reference, but he didn't stop. He's still talking. 
There's now thou no condemnation to them which are in who? There's no guilt. See, your emotions sometimes, you can mess up, and your emotions, you, feel, you start to feel so guilty of what you've done, and you know, you're not worthy. That shouldn't have never happened. It shouldn't have never happened, but get up, keep going. It, all of us going to mess up. Don't let nobody get in the pulpit and tell you they don't never mess up. Watch out. There's therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after flesh, after spirit. That part was not in the original translation. It just said there's no condemnation, no guilt to those in Christ. Period. That was added as a translator. They translated and they just felt that should be in there because that's where law. Law always try to come in and make you think you got to do something to stop something. Now, this thing we, we're supposed to do, do Father, correspond to the word, but who walk. In other words, so it's trying to say if you don't walk in the, if you don't walk, if you don't walk, should I say, there's no confidence in now to those and confidence to them which in Christ who walk not after the rest, but after the spirit. In other words, so if you're not, what he's trying to say is that if you walk, if you're walking out of the flesh, after the flesh, there's, there's guilt. Yes, there's guilt, but there's condemnation come from Satan. All of it comes from Satan. When you mess up, Satan is the one going to bring the guilt. God's not going to bring no guilt on you. God will try to encourage you to get up and do it again. Because the Holy Spirit is love. He loves you. Same thing if your child messed up. You, you want to encourage your child. Hey, try. suppose your child went and they, they failed the test in school or something. You know, you want to encourage, hey, get up and try it again. Don't, don't always beat them up. <laughs> I was listening to something last night. The guy said, <laughs> when you... He said, you have a daughter or something like that in life, and you don't want her to date this guy. Don't go, don't go tell her how no good the guy is, because that's going to make her one and more. Just say, just turn around and say, he's such a nice guy. He's a blessing. <laughs> you call those things to be not as though they were. The change. Even though he's no good, you call those things, because you know what? That's going to that's gonna make them gravitate to the person more. And because, you know what, a lot of times people already see it. And what happened, they just, you, they, they, they rebelled because you said don't do it. They just going to go up because they want to feel, you don't know what you're talking about. So don't say nothing. Oh, he's such a blessing. And then now you, they got them thinking, huh, why do they think he's such a blessing? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life. Now watch this. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. So the law produces sin and death. The law produces sin and death. Let me say something to you. People tell you, you know, God promised us 120 years, period. We're supposed to get 120 years, not 70. That 70 years was in there because it's part of the law. You already said because of the law it was there. So you, we need to be on our confession for 120 years. Now, we got to change some things. Let me say this to you right now. We cannot, you cannot eat the way you used to eat years ago. <laughs> you know, you can, you can eat candy, Snickers, Reese cups, all, you eat all that stuff all the time. Sugar, you know, cotton candy. <laughs> and you know, cotton candy ain't nothing but sugar. <laughs> hey. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and what? And death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. The law couldn't take care of the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, what did he do? He condemned. See, flesh, your, your flesh sin has already been condemned by God. He ain't looking at it. Now, he dealt with Israel based on a physical level, not on a spiritual level, because Satan was their father. So everything they had to do was on a physical level, not us, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 4. That why? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled where? In us. Everybody say, I am the righteousness of God, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now watch verse 5. I'll put the ice on the cake. For they that are after the flesh do the mind things of the flesh. 
But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So if you're after the word spirit, spirit, you're going to do the things of the spirit. But you're not getting the word. You're going after the flesh, and you're going to do the things, the corrupt things of the flesh. Automatic. You're going to wind up doing it. That's just saying that. I can't help myself, you know. <laughs> That's what happens. Can't help yourself. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. I, I don't know about you. I want peace. <laughs> I want peace. I, you, you know, don't come with me a whole bunch of drama. You know, I don't hear no drama. Now, if I got a situation, I can help you. But if you just all the time coming with drama, I see you. Oh, no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know. I got enough stuff I have to deal with on my own. But I, you just bring in drama. You want to talk drama all the time. Amen. Verse 7. Oh. Uh, seven. Because the carnal mind or the fleshy mind is enemy against God. It's an enemy to God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. When you think fleshly, it's not subject to the law. It's not, it's not going to follow God's word at all. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh, wow, cannot do what? Cannot please God. I didn't write it. Cannot please God. Cannot please God. Verse 9. I think I want to do now. But talk about us now. But ye, everybody said me, are not in the flesh. But what? But I'm in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. It's so, it's so be that the spirit of God, now, now watch, that word initial spirit is talking about your spirit. But when he said the spirit of God, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, dwells where? In you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. See, we got the spirit of Christ and we got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, everybody say Christ is in me. The body is dead because of sin. Now, let me ask you a question. Can a dead body move? So God consider your flesh is dead. Now, what you got to do is correspond to what God says about your flesh. Flesh, you dead. You don't have no dominion here. I rule you. You are a slave to me. You do what I say do based on the word. Sometimes you run into child, sometimes you just got to go pick up the word. Sometimes even that little creative power book. Um, you can just take it sometime and just start, just say those things every day. You'd be surprised how, how you start to feel yourself up that you made to deal with issues better. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. Now watch verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, talking about the Holy Spirit there, capitalized, from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. He's going to make alive your mortal body. Your, mortal, your body's going to change when Jesus comes back. Or we're going to get a new glorified body. Walk through the walls. Won't need your car. Just go to Germany. I mean, that's going to be something. Because you, why? You're not going to have, you're not going to have blood going through your veins. You have spirit going through your veins. People ask sometimes, well, will I know my loves when I go to heaven? Will you know them when you see them in Chicago? <laughs> yeah. Because the Bible said when you die, you're going to put on a spiritual body. Amen. So you will, you will recognize your loved ones. Amen. Do I have verse, let me see, do I want to do verse 12 here? Yeah, do verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not debited, not to the flesh. In other words, we, you know, we don't have to do what the flesh wants to do. Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. 
But he through the spirit, now watch this, mortified the deeds of the body and you shall live. So guess what? We, I, I got emotional issues. I got to take that word and mortify, deal with those emotions, talk to me emotions. And sometimes you got to talk to me, you still might feel the same fuller and keep on talking. You know what? It'll go away. It will go away because the word is powerful. The word is loaded. Everybody said the word is loaded. Amen? Now, and I need to say this. And sometimes when you're going through something, you're going through different emotions. Sometimes you don't like, feel like picking on a word. Some way or another, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but instead, put on a teaching message or go to YouTube and watch some word. But see, it's a lot easier to go put on Lifetime. <laughs> and y'all heard that to you? It's a lot easier. Some way or another, uh, the remote control, to take the remote control to go to YouTube or go on our channel. We got our own channel on, on, on Roku's called, uh, you just go to click, type in Faith Love, you can, you can watch all the messages on there too. But it's kind of hard to go pick up the remote control or put a DVD in. It's kind of hard for that, people, to do that. It's easy to go watch them. And you ever notice when you watch something like that, it goes fast. You start to watch the word in the beginning, you're like, okay, okay. And sometimes, other times, you watch the word, you feel fine. But you can't go by your emotion. You just got to sit there and hear that word. I've seen some of the best situations when I took the word up and when I didn't feel like doing it. What was that going? That was pressure on my flesh. The emotional situation, trying to, trying to get me down, not to do nothing. To have a pity party on myself about me. And it, it's not about us. It's always about somebody else. Verse 14. I think that'll do that one. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. Now watch this. You got the Holy Spirit on the inside. He said, you're led by the Spirit of God. You are the sons of God. God, the Holy Spirit, wanted to lead us, to guide us, to do all those things. Sometimes I, I think I got teachings on YouTube about the Holy Spirit, too, that, that, that'll really help you understand it. That he's your comforter, he's your guide, he's with you, he's your friend. Every morning I get up and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. I thank you that you're with me. You're my friend, my advocate. Without you today, I, 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 can't, I can't do nothing. See? And, you know, like you got the uh, boss a job, on the job trying to give you, trying to make your work hard, pray for him. Pray for him. Go in there and pray in the Spirit. Or right away, when you pray in the Spirit, I don't know, I don't know we have those sheets on the table that, that we use a format, we pray for the ministry. You can, uh, if she got one, she got one on the table, we'll give it to you. If not, we'll make it up for you. How we pray for in corporate prayer. We usually have corporate prayer on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9. Now, always check with us before you come. For some reason, sometimes we might not have it. Most of the time, we do have it. Okay? Huh? 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, yes. On Friday, on no, Sunday morning, Saturday morning. Yeah, we, this Saturday, we'll be here. It would definitely be this, 8 to 9. But always check with us. And put it like this. If you come to prayer, we'll put you on the list. If something happens, we'll call you and let you know. But other than that, most of the time we're here for prayer. At 8 o'clock to 9, we just come in and pray and lay before God, pray in the spirit and confess some things. And hey, any, anybody's welcome to it. I don't know what I got me. Maybe I need to say it. I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. But anyway, there's some sheets on the table. God allows how we, how, we, how, we, how we do pray. And it, it, it's, it's so important because the Bible said when you pray in tongues, you're speak, speaking hidden secrets, you're hidden mystery. I don't know all about people. I can say pray, pray for such a But pray what? I don't, I don't know what to pray. Pray they fall over a bridge. What do you want me to pray? You know? But see, when I pray in tongues, I pray the perfect prayer because the Holy Spirit will give me the utterance because he knows what they need. I had on my clothes now. I had a lady that, um, she came to, she's in another state now, but she came to the service. She was a Baptist. And she wanted to get filled with the Spirit. She heard about it. She wanted to get filled. So she got filled with the Spirit. And all of a sudden, what happened, uh, she started to get groanings. And they started to come up real strong on her. She told me, the Pastor, I'm getting these. I said, well, you got to go with it. And do you realize the next time, that's what God's trying to make you aware of something. So what happened, the next time it happened, her cousin went over a cliff, Carl went over a cliff. And he came out alive. They don't understand why. But she laid before God at the time. You get to God, sometimes the Holy Spirit trying to get you to help people. And you start to feel that urge to pray. And all the time, I don't just, I, I keep an attitude of praying. Even when I'm at work, when I'm just standing around, I'll be shikle, but I'm no more sticky, but I'm, I'll go in the store quietly. I'm not shikle, but I'll real quiet. I'm praying. 
And, 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 and the Holy Spirit will start to do that to you. you just, he'll just, he just start to do that to you. You don't, you don't think nothing of it. And sometimes I'll be praying it up. Like I told you one time I was in New York. I don't know if you heard this. And what happened is that I had this urge. I, it, it, it wasn't quite had the urge to come out real loud. I knew it was coming out loud. And, I, and I'm like, Lord. And I'm saying, you know, I'm walking down the streets and you know, people think I'm a real nut. You know? And so, so he said, take your phone and put it to your ear. And I said, Shiko Brab no more say bo kobo shin brab ne mo ma la kada. Bid bo shiko bo shibide de brab ling ma. Hey, see, God's smart. I, I, I didn't think of that myself at all. Amen. Well, y'all blessed today. Every head bow, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. We give you glory, give you honor and praise. I want to give you the opportunity now to pros 